Hi everyone, I'm WABC Chief Meteorologist Lee Goldberg and this is weather or not and our big weather stories will be the fire risk ongoing and the chill coming in this week, which is the coldest weather that we've seen since the spring. Well, first the fire risk as it gets gusty on Tuesday and we could have some wind gusts that go over 30, maybe even push 40 miles an hour in a couple of spots. So the fire risk is ramping up after a brief break with some minor rains and winds. They were breezy on Monday, but overall some of that dampness, which was basically about a quarter of an inch of rainfall on average across the area, at least was a temporary reprieve, but really not a long term fix. In terms of the chill, this is the coldest so far coming in as we go through midweek. Highs in the 40s for most areas on Wednesday and Thursday and nights in the 30s for the first time in New York City since early April. The extended forecast, unfortunately, no significant rain, and we're also monitoring the tropics. We may not be done with named storms just yet. In terms of fire weather, the red flag warning is up for New York City, Long Island, the Hudson Valley and Connecticut. There's a fire statement out for New Jersey, but basically the entire area is under elevated fire risk and that will go through the day on Tuesday. Some gusts out of the northwest could go 30 or 40 miles an hour and the humidity will be as low as 30%. So any ignition will spread very rapidly. Be super careful. Now one thing about the major fire near Greenwood Lake, which is called the Jennings Creek Fire, is that we looked back and back in May, there was actually a microburst in this area and a lot of trees were knocked down. So there's not only small dry fuels like grasses and mulch, but there's large dry fuels as well, like large trees in the area. A very dangerous fire that's gonna be very challenging for firefighters. And the smoke plume, which really was aimed more toward the Hudson Valley later Monday into Monday evening, will change. That orientation will change because a secondary cold front is coming through and the wind will go more north northwest during the day on Tuesday. Now it's almost like a windshield wiper coming from the Hudson Valley across New York City around daybreak. So I wouldn't be shocked if some of that smoke is headed toward New York City in the early morning hours. Maybe that coincides with kind of a, a hazy pretty sunrise but I wish that meant good news. But that's the smoke plume coming in and also the idea that maybe air quality could be compromised as well. As we go through the day and the wind becomes more north northwest, that whole smoke plume may actually bypass New York City. It could be more aimed at parts of Staten Island, maybe toward Newark, Livingston and Springfield. So all of northeast New Jersey will have to watch out for that smoke and maybe into parts of New York City as well through the day. And you can see the forecast air quality goes down to moderate across parts of northeast New Jersey and even down toward Trenton. Remember, we have some other fires going on across the area. So that was the rainfall from Sunday afternoon and night through early Monday morning. It was as forecast, generally a couple of tenths of an inch of rainfall, maybe three tenths. That type of rainfall maybe soaks into the soil a few inches and it's not going to last long. It's soaked up rapidly and then any surface moisture gets evaporated very quickly in an air mass like this. When you have a soaking like an inch of rainfall, now you can talk about going in maybe one to even two, two and a half feet into the soil. That's the type of rain we really need a good soaking to go deep into that topsoil, at least into the first few feet anyway. When you look at the overall rain we would need in a month to end this drought, it's really a tall task. Five to seven inches of rain in the Hudson Valley, seven to 10 inches northeast New Jersey, New York City, uh, much of Long Island, although Manhattan and the Bronx in the five to seven inch category. And then the areas of Middlesex and Monmouth and Ocean County, how about 10 to 12 inches of rain? I mean, you're pushing like three months of rainfall there. And that's why we see parts of Ocean County in extreme drought and severe drought, southern half of New Jersey, even in the parts of northern New Jersey and moderate drought in the northern half of the viewing area. So we're over eight inches below average for the fall and for the year, a little over four inches of rain below average. The reservoirs are running some 15 and a half percent below average. And you can see that our normal capacity would be about 79% and we're just above 63 and percent. And that's really looking at the New York watersheds as well. And again, we got very little rainfall because of the small amount we got. We dropped out of the second driest fall and we're now still in the top five, fifth driest fall so far with no significant rain going in terms of the wildfire risk. I think it's highest on Tuesday just because of the gusty winds. 
but it's still elevated Wednesday and into late week. The humidities will continue to drop on Wednesday, but we'll have lighter winds. There will be clouds gathering on Thursday. The relative humidity a little higher and the winds not too strong. So the actual risk of ignition is lower, although of course, it still can spark with any careless actions. So you have to be super careful and vigilant through later in the week. And looking at the overall pattern, we're getting this parade of fairly weak, somewhat moisture starved systems. Although, the, you know, they may actually carry some decent moisture as they go through the Ohio Valley and into the Appalachians, but they're drying as they get toward our area in the coastal plain. So it just, we're not in favorable conditions to get steadier rainfall. When you look at the Climate Prediction Center forecast, it is somewhat encouraging beyond the seven day, the 19th through the 25th. We are technically in a slightly above normal pattern as we head toward the home stretch of the month. But you look at the short term and I was hopeful for a Thursday threat and that chance has continued to lower and I'll explain why in a second. There is a chance of a shower coming in as we go into the Monday time period, but that also looks very minimal as well. Future cast will show chilly conditions on Tuesday morning around 50 40s in the suburbs. There's some patchy clouds because there's a secondary push of cooler air coming in. I think we might hit the low and mid 50s by one or two in the afternoon hours, but because of the strength of this cold air, the temperatures may start to drop off a little bit later in the day. By the end of the day, we're in the upper 40s and lower 50s with that gusty wind. It's still brisk in the evening hours and the winds generally relax during the overnight and that will allow for good radiational cooling. So this will be our coldest numbers in quite a while. 30s in New York City for the first time since early April. Lots of 20s in our suburbs, especially off to the north and west. And then even with abundant sunshine on Wednesday, we will spend most of the day climbing through the 40s. Maybe we touch 50 briefly on the thermometer, but the flavor of the day is more 40s. In terms of winds, it'll already be breezy on Tuesday morning. The gusts could reach 35, maybe even 40 miles an hour during the early afternoon. We're still windy into the evening hours, and then the winds relax by the time we get into Wednesday morning. First time I've used the wind chill map, and it will feel like 20s in the morning hours on Wednesday. So on Wednesday with the weather map, again, 40s for the most part, high pressure nosing in from eastern Canada. As that comes in, it's not calm, but it's definitely a lighter wind. Now what's happening is the low and the cooler air or the, the actual dip in the jet stream or trough in the jet stream that brought us the rain Sunday night into Monday has cut off in the upper atmosphere out in the northern Atlantic. So essentially it's kind of everything's getting kind of jammed up. So when we look at the system and this was the hope for some rain on Thursday, that low out in the Atlantic is making this storm over the Ohio Valley and Great Lakes take the path of least resistance. So it wants to travel off to our south and that's why we just get brushed by a few showers here, mainly in our southern and western suburbs. We just don't get that beneficial rain, which heads closer to the mid-Atlantic, kind of goes underneath that other low pressure offshore. By Friday, we're just breezy and cool, a mix of clouds and sunshine. That low actually merges with the offshore low, which will be sending back moisture westward, but we only, we get the worst part of it. We just get the clouds and cool weather on Saturday. New England might get some beneficial rains. Maybe there's a couple of showers that back into our area, but nothing significant. As that low begins to lift a little farther north and east, we should get a little sunnier on Sunday. But you see how everything's very amplified and kind of jammed up. So this low offshore not allowing that storm on Thursday to give us any beneficial rain. That's what the weather map looks like over the weekend. Again, close enough to keep us cool with a lot of clouds, but not enough in the way of moisture. There's a lot of warmth building over the middle of the country. That doesn't get here in terms of way above normal warm, so we're not going to get those 60s and 70s that we've been enjoying. We're going to stay just a hair on the on the above side of normal. Figure when we talk about our, our highs going into the next 7 to 10 days, it's more like mid and upper 50s than seeing the 60s and 70s. Looks like there's another cool pocket of air and at least a chance of showers. That's why I was talking about the Monday threat 
and then that moves away and some warming wants to try to take place as we go into the 20th and 21st. So getting closer to Thanksgiving, the pattern looking a little warmer and you can see beyond the seven day, the Climate Prediction Center does still have us in an above normal pattern in terms of temperatures. I just don't think it's way above normal and you can see it even on the 10 day stretch. We've got this cool pocket with our chilliest days being Wednesday and Thursday. Then we're sort of seasonable to slightly above average into the weekend and maybe we have a shot at getting above 60 by the time we get to the 21st of November, which would be above normal. The tropics are still active. We're going to have to watch this area in the Caribbean later in the week. We may have a tropical depression, may even get a named storm out of this in the Caribbean. But I, I want to show you some. This is the low level spin. And for this case, I'm using the European model and it's showing something more defined here towards Central America in the Western Caribbean by the time we get to Friday. The other thing is, remember how I told you these two storms were out in the Atlantic. Look how they kind of do a dance around each other. That's called Fujiwara effect when these storms are circling each other and ultimately joining forces. And at the same time, you know, is there a named storm early next week near Jamaica. There are some other modeling that even would take it into the, the Straits of Florida. So we'll have to watch it down there. This isn't coming that far north, but it would be amazing if we get another hurricane in the Caribbean and coming northward into the Gulf again. Uh, again, the, those storms are swimming offshore Thursday the 21st. That's at the point where maybe there's some of that warmth over the middle of the country might be able to penetrate eastward a little bit. So seven in the morning as we go back to the short term cast. 50 degrees Tuesday morning, 40s in the suburbs. It's clear to partly cloudy. It's already brisk and chilly. And we'll have a lot of sunshine, but temperatures will kind of flatline during the day in the low and middle 50s. We'll go for 55, a gusty wind, high fire risk, lots of sunshine and seasonably cool. Then the winds start to back off. It's still a really uh, chilly, brisk evening. And then the winds back off. We're down to 36. That's the coldest since April 5th. Clear, brisk and chilly. It'll feel like 20s by the time we get to daybreak Wednesday. By the way, there is a meteor shower that is peaking early in the week. It's called the Northern Torrids. Look in the northeastern sky, peaks around midnight. Unfortunately, the waxing gibbous moon can hinder that. It's going to be full um, coming up Friday night. And the rate is only about five shooting stars per hour. If you're saying, why should I bother? Well, these tend to be fireballs, so it could be quite dramatic. So if you happen to be up in the middle of the night, take a look toward that northeastern sky. If you're away from some of the urban light pollution, you might be able to see that. Again, coming up is the super beaver moon on Friday night. That's the final super moon of the season, not the largest. Uh, and then as we go into Sunday night, the Leonid meteor shower will peaks. But again, th that's going to coincide with that full moon. So viewing will be challenging. Here is your seven day AccuWeather the forecast. So for Tuesday, we've got a gusty wind. It's cooler. It's dry. We're at 55. Fire risk is high. As we go through Wednesday, it's bright, but it's chilly about 50 degrees. And you can see Tuesday night and Wednesday night are both in the 30s by Thursday. There is a shower chance south and west. It's nothing significant, even if a few showers can reach the tri-state. I do think there'll be a fair amount of clouds gathering. We're at 48, a chilly day down to 40 at night. That's more classic November. Clouds and sunshine on Friday, 56. On Saturday, more clouds and sun. It's breezy, 56. I think Sunday is the sunnier half of the weekend at 57. And then maybe there's a passing shower out on Monday. We're at 57 degrees and lots of clouds. One other thing I did want to mention and that came to mind with some of the long term is many of you have been asking me about a potential snowstorm the week of Thanksgiving, which is another case of unfortunately on social media posting one run of one model that would bring us a snowstorm toward that week of Thanksgiving. Don't count on it. Um, that's what we call fantasy charts. Uh, it was actually posted tongue in cheek by a meteorologist, but it's been taken seriously by some of you. And now all of a sudden out there is this buzz about potential snow on Thanksgiving. No one knows anything about the Thanksgiving forecast at this point. All I can tell you is that we saw the pattern leading into Thanksgiving with above normal temperatures and near to even slightly below normal precip. But uh, there's just no weight to be put on a fantasy chart like that. It is not dependable. It is not to be counted on. And one thing I always said with whether or not when we started this po podcast is we would debunk any long range you know, forecasts that are calling for storms that are just off the table. So we will be updating you on that, telling you more about it as we get closer to that Thanksgiving forecast. Once we get to that seven to 10 day period, I'll be able to give you a good idea about at least what the pattern is favoring. And then we'll start to get into the details. But 
That is, uh, there's just nothing to that at this point. Now, thanks as always for listening to Whether or Not. We will see you next time. Rain or shine.